Hi. So today I'm going to cover adding footprints to your game. Um, it was a rec it was a comment on another one of my videos. So what I've uh, done so far is I've just created a sprite that has the appearance of walking. I've created the object, the movement. and I've placed it in the room and I've colored the background color green so that's all I've done so far now we're gonna add the footprints so in order to do this we're gonna create a sprite called SPR left FP FP stands for footprint uh, you could just write LFP you could write it whatever you want just so long as you remember what it contains so and actually we don't want to create a new one here what we're gonna to want to do is go into our player and so this one both are touching the ground the right ones about to lift this one we want and we want this one where it starts to lift the other leg so we copy this And this one will be for our left. So we're just going to paste that in there. Now, we don't want the body for our footprint. So we can just cut that off. But now the foot, the feet, are right where we want them to be. So we're going to remove this one because we don't need this one. We want the left footprint. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a circle that's a little bit smaller. There we go. Right there. We're going to erase what's left. the brown from the original and the outline of the original and let's color this one uh, brown a dark brown I'm gonna copy and paste this one in a second but not right now actually we're gonna center it we're gonna create another sprite right right footprint and we want to grab the fourth the image four because this is the one for the right when it starts to lift the right foot so we're going to copy that gonna throw it in the right footprint sprite again delete the body delete the foot we don't want we're gonna come into our left uh, footprint and we're gonna copy and paste this because we want it to be the exact same size and we know where to put it to um, we know that the, it touches the bottom so when we paste and do this should be here and then we erase alright so we, now we've made our two uh, footprint sprites we've centered them what we want to do is we want to create the objects now and all we're gonna do is object LFP left footprint
and we we want to set a timer for this so that way it deletes itself after a certain amount of time so time timer equals now we probably want it for about half a second for them to last so my room speed is 30 so I'm going to put the timer at 15, which would be half a second. 15 steps is half the amount of steps in my rooms. So we're going to negative equals 1. Timer negative equals 1. If timer is less than or equal to 0, instance destroy and we have that done and we're gonna want to copy this because we're gonna actually put the exact same thing in our other footprint as well so we're gonna create the object RFP right footprint Paste that in here. I'm going to create the timer again. So now, once um, it's created, it'll spawn for half a second, then delete itself. So now, what we want to do is do a switch on the image index of sp uh, of sprite player so when it's on the zero case so case zero let's add a break before we start so we don't forget <coughs> if it's on case zero then we're going to want to spawn the left footprint because if you re if you remember our first one I, it was zero and then it starts to lift up with the left so instance create xy now the reason we're doing xy is cuz we're creating it from the object player now because we've centered it and we use the original as a basis it's going to be the same X and Y as the object in player when you initially create it. So then we do the object that we want to create, which is object LFP. Then we have some other cases. We have case 1... We have case two, case three, and we have all the way till case four is our next is our next one that we can have. Now I wanted to show that if we have a number like this where it's case one, two, three, and notice we have nothing inside, then let's say we have in here a um, HP equals one whatever we have in here when image index is equal to one two or three it'll set HP equal to one so all these will run what's in this because I didn't put anything inside of them so all of these are are the same as this it's saying that if one two or three then HP equals one although it's not really because it's coming out and it's not what we really want but I did that to show you those are that's how we would do it if we had multiple values that would do the same thing however if it rolls one two or three we don't really want to do anything so we can actually cover the two cases that we want and for every other case we can just write a default case that breaks so if it rolls zero or four it'll run these two 0 it will 
right now create the instance of the left footprint case 4 will just break and default will break so let's create the same thing inside of case 4 except swap the object that we create to right footprint so now when it's 0 over 4 we create either left or right so left at 0 4 we create the right every other case which covers one second which covers one two three five six seven and eight will be default break they'll just break out they don't do anything all right so now we're actually we should be ready we have the objects created they're in the room so let's play this and hope and we have our footprints I wonder what it would look like if I made his feet all black I think it would look better even though it's just an example should make it easier to differ uh, differentiate between the footprints and the feet And there are footprints. I mean, it was working before. It was just harder to see, I think, when it's like that. Now, it only really looks like it works well when it's going straight. And that's because I didn't bother to make a specific sprite for when it's going right. So it just sort of looks awkward like he's walking sideways. But the footprints are working at the correct spot. Anyway, hope that helped. Have a good one. So one more thing. When I went back to read the user's comment, uh, I noticed that he also wanted it to fade, the footprints to fade. So we're g we've already set it up, the timer. That'll delete them. So what we need to do is set the image alpha To reduce itself I'm just gonna write reduce by equals image uh, or let's do 1 divided by 15 and then we'll do if image alpha is greater than 0 then image alpha negative equals reduced by and one fifteenth of its the alpha is one by default so we're doing one divided by fifteen but we don't want to do um, image alpha well we could we could do image alpha but if we do that we can't put that here we would need to take this, remove this, and put it in the create event. So I'm going to do that. The other thing I wanted to cover is um, this will make it uniform so we don't need to worry about it being a half a second um, for everybody. Uh, by doing 15, how they need to set it to different values, we can just do room speed divided by 2, and this will be a half second for all the games so now when it's less than or when it's greater than zero 
for every step for those 15 steps until it destroys itself it'll reduce it, uh, its transparency value so it'll become more and more transparent so let's run this but let's actually bring this over to the other one as well and we need to create a reduce by value uh, piece in here equals or nope image alpha divided by 15 and then room speed and actually what we could do room speed divided by 2 what we could do instead of reduce by 15 reduce by timer divide by timer I mean so we'll go back and do that in our other one it just makes more sense to do it that way alrighty so now the footprint should fade let's bring this over here oops and not set before reading it and that was in the right reduce by reduce by control C it's gotta be in the left one then yep okay I had a capital B instead of a lowercase one the create event for left and now they're fading hope that helped peace